Okay, greetings all, and welcome to another edition of the Gnostic Sphere. My name is Michael Morgan. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the third, fourth, and fifth dimensions of a uh, correctly made hermetic magic circle and the higher dimensional geometry contained therein. Now, this is for the advanced student, but uh, because, or the aspiring to be advanced student, so I'm going to start with some basics and then move pretty quick, but you should be very familiar all with the lesser uh, ritual of the pentagram, whether it be vanishing and or invoking. And also a familiarization of the Fifth Wave Mystery School's middle uh, or meta programming protocol and uh, what uh, the Fifth Wave calls the magic circle is uh, the metatrix monad, you know, making the hypercube and then uh, also the pyramid that goes within that. And uh, so anyway, we're going to start with some basics in geometry and move uh, pretty quick and uh, go from there. Uh, hopefully you know how to get in touch with me uh, if you have any questions. And uh, anyway, here we go. Um, so let's start with the basics of the uh, of geometry of the platonic solids, because whether you know it or not, uh, that's what you're making when you do a Golden Dawn or Hermetic or Fifth Way based mag create a magic circle. Uh, the God names, the, the, the names of power and the shapes, that, namely the pentagram and the, the crosses and uh, the hexagram as well. We'll touch on the hexagram rites as well uh, leading up to uh, the, the between the lesser and supreme rites and how they link and what they do and why we do, because there's nothing that is arbitrary in these rites. Every letter, every word has a purpose, and because magic happens within the mind, you can have all the ritual tools and all the implements and all the robes and the incense and candles you want. This is high magic, you know, not lower magic, and even in lower magic, the the recipe, it's not recipe magic, you don't just follow it, read it out of the book and do it. The intent must be there. Magic happens first within the mind. The universe is mental. Uh, the universe is mind. And the most potent tool you have is the human mind, human consciousness. And uh, awareness, of course, is an attribution and a uh, part of mind, uh, uh, it's the astral is extremely plastic, very malleable, and it responds to consciousness because it is a part of the mind of the all. And the, the human being itself, with all your body, is not just your physical body, but the etheric and astral body, um, the higher self, uh, the soul, the spirit, uh, depending on you know, in the fifth way, we, we call it the five bodies. Uh, you know, Hinduism, you know, the seven bodies. Christianity, the three bodies, the spirit, uh, or mind, and the psyche, or soul, and the physical body, in mystical Christianity. It uh, doesn't really matter. Um, you, we've got to delineate it in some way. In other words, there's the physical body, and then the, the, the emotional body, the mental body, the spiritual body. Um, in different lineages, different traditions, uh, cut it up into different ways, three, five, or seven, you know, whether we've got five psychic centers, six psychic centers, seven chakras, you know, or eight chakras, these are almost uh, all arbitrary, and it's almost like, where does red stop being red and become orange? Well, in the middle of red, we know it's red, in the middle of orange, we know that's orange, but they, there's a reddish-orange and an orange-red as they flow out from white light. Uh, we've got to make a demarcation somewhere uh, in order to um, you know, classify it and be able to talk about it uh, in, a, in a way that communicates what we're, we're saying, uh, a standardization. Um, so what we're doing with that is uh, the physical body, you know, the three dimensions of the physical body, and the emotional body, or the, the lower body is the ka, uh, the Ku being the higher self, um, the Hadit, or the shadow, the unconscious body, the 
which communicate the, the Sahun, or the spirit body, the body that's, that's connected to the one mind, and the cobs, the star body, so on and so forth. So anyway, um, before we get to the nitty and gritty and talk about the rites themselves, let's go over some basic platonic geometry. This is the tetrahedron, meaning four-faced, corresponds to the element of fire. You can see that if you have a three-dimensional tetrahedron, um, such as this one over here, uh, it looks like a kite like that, but if you take the 3D form of it in a, sh in a, in a, a light source or flashlight or a candle and shine it upon a flat two-dimensional object, it will, you will get uh, a triangle. Or if you spin it this way a little bit more and adjust it, you can see where if you turn it, you will have a square with uh, uh, an equal lateral cross going through an equal armed X going through the uh, center of it. Okay, these are just different forms. Or the I and the triangle It's also like a tetrahedron. Um, five of these put together is a pentatope. The, a pentatope or anything with a tope on the end of it um, is generally meaning like a fourth dimensional object. Uh, but uh, five of these around uh, uh, the center one, uh, if you shine a flashlight through it, you get a pentagram. Uh, also, a pyramid can be done that way. It's got the four bases and the one on the top, just like in the lesser invoking ritual, the pentagram. You're literally creating a, there's five stars, the four quarters, and the one above you. You're making a pyramid, drawing it down that way. Um, using the god names. It, uh, if you spin it on this, like this, with the top still available on the apex of the pyramid, still not past the horizon of the base, when you tilt it and flash a light, you will see a pentagon. It will make a pentagon. So these are very very important it's the basics of uh, there's four points it is uh, the basic unit of three dimensions uh, you have to have at least four points to make a fourth dimensional object with any symmetry at all uh, if you just have three points you get some form of triangle uh, which can be put on a two-dimensional flat surface of course but to raise that out of the plane of the x and y axis to have a z axis three dimensions x y and z you must have four points just like to have fourth dimensions you must have five points uh, the four points of three dimensions and then another one and also while i'm talking about it, third fourth and fifth there's really it's very difficult third dimension is also just an abstract thing because if it's physical it's a four dimensions there are four dimensions in the, in the physical realm uh, because there's the three dimensions plus time and time being the fourth dimension uh, also all around us people have a harder time grasping the concept of the fourth dimension well an everyday object that we all know about is, is fruits uh, an apple is an excellent example of a fourth dimensional object because it folds from the inside outward and it's got the three dimensions almost like a sphere but it's almost like a torus as well and the torus is going to be something important to talk about or also like a donut it's a vortex having spin both around towards the center and then on the outside towards the inside the outside and the inside and those two together is like the whirling vortex of a tornado. And when we get into Enochian, the uh, Enochian uh, angels are in Kabbalistic realms known as the Ophanim, which is Hebrew for the whirling ones. And that's exactly what they are. Great, conscious, uh, huge, eternal whirling vortices of mind, consciousness, and energy. And they are the whirling ones. And that basic unit, the negative space in that donut where the flow is, that's what the fifth ways call them as flows, that is the base unit of all Enochian lettering. And uh, the fifth way expounds upon that, uh, Darlene does, in the book of the Ophonic Revelation. Um, angels in the end of time and 
consciousness and things of that nature that uh, can be found at logo.com uh, under uh, the Ophonic Revelation by Vincent Bridges and Darlene uh, with a contribution from uh, Robert Wilson my friend and fellow adept of the uh, initiate of the fifth way mystery school uh, anyway this is elemental fire it's the basic one like I said of the platonic solids the tetrahedron which means four faced then and of course we have that is it, see it's all linear and pointed so that's like masculine and then there are no points at all to this it's all rounded and circles and energy that is the f base feminine shape used uh, you set the donut on top of the fire of uh, tetrahedron and not only do you get uh, using showing tan Stan Tennant's work uh, in geoma geometric metaphors uh, of life uh, we show how that that asymmetrical rainbow grid that's the seven colors of the rainbow swirling and chasing one another if you just outline the borders of where those colors start and stop you get a very asymmetrical looking whirlwind that is also the shape of the human hand like this uh, and the way you turn it with a, again a source of light behind it shining up on the wall you get in sequence all 22 original letters of the Hebrew alphabet that's why they're also called fire letters they look like a flame it's very asymmetrical you spin that inside of the pup tent, uh, so-called the tetrahedron, uh, out of the book of uh, Leviticus. Uh, the flame in the pup tent is this code showing you how to make the different 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which are also the 22 paths of the tree of life and the 22 different ways of viewing the world and of scapes of consciousness or mindscapes that exist in every sane, healthy human mind and the paths of the tree of life, the paths of initiation, the paths of how the Godhead becomes incarnate and then the consciousness of the human returns back to enlightenment and, and becomes uh, their full potential. But anyway, uh, let's move again. Let's move pretty quick. quick. Uh, there's the tetrahedron. Here is the next one. Higher up is the cube or hexahedron, also known as a cube. It has six faces, eight vertices, or eight points, 12 edges. It's attributed to elemental earth. Then we have the octahedron. It has eight faces, six points, and 12 edges. It's attributed to elemental air. If you notice, it was a pyramid. The base unit is a pyramid, and if you set a pyramid on a mirror, you would have an octahedron. Now, these two, the cube and the octahedron, are very much close, because if you notice, it has, the cube has six faces and eight vertices, and if you have a point, and if you take the center of each cube face, you, you can make an octahedron, and, the, you know, it's what we call tessellating, or in mathematics, a tessellation, or tessellating. Same with this now that you have eight faces and six points if you take eight, eight every point on this and make a face on it you know a, a square face you would have a cube see how the cube and the octahedron are extremely interconnected the six faces of the cube and the six vertices of the octahedron um, it's two-dimensional um, shadowgram is a uh, square and also a hexagram same as the cube the cube can be made like, like that to form the hexagram to where on the shadow if it was a solid cube all you would see was the outline of a hexagon and so on and so forth um, platinum this is the crystal lattice of platinum the, one of the most powerful catalyzers known to man. Okay, platinum, and all of the uh, most of the precious metals group. Um, the hexagon is, of course, hexane. The hexane ring, how 
na Mother Nature used the hexagon and, and bees, you know, honeycomb, all the way down at the molecular level to the aromatics uh, and aliphatics of organic chemistry, uh, hexane, hexene, benzene, the base of all aromatic compounds and uh, simple sugars and complex sugars and amino acids, the pentagram and hexagon hexagram you will find hexagon and pentagon you will find all throughout molecular biology particularly biochemistry this chemistry of life now after the octahedron we have the icosahedron and the dodecahedron the 12 faced and the 20 faced okay the 20 faced is elemental water Dodecahedron is air, elemental spirit or air. These tessellate into one another. If you notice, it's got 20 faces, 30 edges, and 12 um, vertices or points. Whereas this one has 12 faces and 20 points or, or vertices. And they both have 30 edges. They both have 30 edges. Elemental spirit or ether elemental water okay so let's stop this make this number one and we will go on to part two directly